I feel like a protector. Sort of like family, I guess. I don't know, it's like, a, you have roots. This is part of our roots. Lobster fishing is the major employer yeah. in this area. There's nothing else for us here. This is our livelihood. We're not going away. This is exceptional. This is, this is amazing. Wilderness, so close to an urban environment. It's important to have those type of spaces close to where people live. You can escape and find a place of shelter, recluse, whatever you want to call it. 282 islands, 7,000 acres of land. Every coastal ecosystem found in Nova Scotia is found in those islands. So it's everything. So the Hunter Wild Islands project all started um, when we were trying to figure out a strategy to protect the coast of Nova Scotia. 85% of the coast is in private ownership. So even if government protects all the land they own on the coast, we wouldn't have our coastline protected and we're losing access to the coast. People are finding beaches and places that for generations we've been able to go. We can't because it's privately owned and people are putting up gates and we're losing that access to this incredible traditional resource that we've had. My name is uh, Brian Murphy. If you're aboard the boat, I'd be Captain Brian Murphy. I do boat tours. We operate the campground, Murphy's Camping on the Ocean. When they started populating the shore, a lot of people moved on these nearby islands and they uh, inhabited them for a while. I guess they're all fishermen up to, I guess, my generation. All through my life, I used to come out with my father and I, I learned to swim here. My kids learned to swim here. We just come out here with family a lot and brought our friends out and then that developed into bringing tourists out and I love sharing it. The local people always had access to these islands. They always uh, had cabins. People started to realize there was uh, maybe a need to save some of these islands. A few years ago, there was a, a new idea come in town. They thought salmon farms would be good put in here. And uh, the more you heard about, the more we realized salmon farms are not, not the best for nature. And at the same time, these islands were like, looked like they'd be good for tourism. So rather than just say no, no, no to salmon farms, we said yes, yes, yes to uh, these 100 wild islands. It just became uh, a much more natural fit for the local area. I'm Jeannie Hobley. And I'm Michael. I've been lobster fishing now for about 38 years. I was 12 years old when I got my lobster license. It it's good... not something for the faint-hearted, I don't think. <laughs> We're in Spry Bay, 70 miles east of Halifax, on the eastern shore. Lobster fishing is the major employer yep. in this area. Yep. There's nothing else for us here. For anything to come in this area and to harm it, such as the salmon farms that they've wanted to put in, it would have ruined the bottom. So for them to come in, a multi-millionaire business to come in and put something in that, they're wiping out our industry on the shore for a handful of jobs. You must have your trap set in the wrong place. They're not taking into consideration the damage it's going to do on this shore. And it will wipe us out. It, I mean, we have nothing else, no other big employer. But we did, they did studies, the group did studies, and there's not the depth of water, there wasn't the current. It would have ruined ruined us completely. 
We were lucky in the fact that when they come here to implant these open pen salmon farms, there was enough damage done on the other shores in New Brunswick, along Nova Scotia. The damage was already done. We plainly told them that if those salmon farms come here, they wouldn't be here long, because we would do whatever it took to, that it wouldn't work. The, the salmon farms, have, that project for now has been put on hold. I don't think it's actually stopped completely. I think they're just waiting for... Things to cool down. Well, for people to forget and say, uh, they're, they're not coming here. We don't have to worry about it anymore. I'm very proud of the people in this area, honestly, you know, because they, they stepped up. So I'm hoping the Thousand Isles with you know, all the attention it's getting, that it will be a plus for us, for who are fighting the salmon farms. That's, I guess, all I can, can hope for <laughs> and say, really. There is fear of, you know, we've lived here forever, we know what, what works for us and what we value about this community, and so the Nature Trust, wherever we work, we, we encounter that sense of, you know, but, but really what are, what's going to happen if this area is protected? Are we going to lose our traditional livelihood? Are we going to lose our traditional access to these, you know, places that, that have been part of our lifestyle? We needed to start slowly, so long before we went public with this idea, we started meeting leaders in the community or the people who are, who are really well connected to the fishing community and to the ecotourism people in the business community and find out, you know, yeah, what are their concerns? And we had public meetings where we asked people, like, what do you want to see happen to the islands? What we were hearing was actually compatible uh, because we weren't talking about expropriation and we weren't talking about stopping people from continuing to go out to the islands and enjoy them as they always had and it wouldn't affect fishing and in fact, if anything, it's going to draw attention to how significant this is um, in terms of the marine and terrestrial ecosystems out here and they need to be protected so, you know, there's less chance some big industrial thing might happen on this shore that, that could disturb that. There's this potential and we see this really good opportunity and we'd like to work with the island owners if, if they're interested and many of them became our biggest champions of, of the project because really they realized this is totally aligned with what, what we want. I think the research we'd done really helped elevate the significance of these islands. These aren't just some islands, they are the only islands like it. Anywhere in North America you can't protect 282 islands, 7,000 acres of land with that much ecological diversity. Every coastal ecosystem found in Nova Scotia is found in those islands. So it's everything, salt marshes and freshwater wetlands, freshwater lakes out on the islands. This is a world-class learning laboratory for us. Once people learned about it, they just had no idea this existed, something so significant and, and beautiful and, and intact.